Last time we talked about Madrid, we talked about something very, very important. We talked about something I felt was important, and, and, and I truly feel like it's the most important thing for Real Madrid right now. Listen, Real Madrid's in a little bit of a slump, but as bad as things have gone for them, they are in one of the best positions, I mean, in the league that they can be in, and the only place where they're really lacking and slacking is in the Champions League. But as long as they can win a couple games in a row in the Champions League, they're going to be fine, make the playoffs, potentially make higher than the playoffs in the Champions League. So things are not as bad as people are making it out to be. Literally, with Real Madrid, with Barcelona slip up over the last couple of weeks that we haven't really talked about too much, Real Madrid's in a great place. But for Real Madrid to get to the best place, I said in the videos a couple of days ago that it has to be on Jude Bellingham. Ancelotti needs to do his very best during this Vinicius Jr. injury to get Jude Bellingham back to Jude Bellingham. That was the most important thing for Real Madrid because whether Mbappe adapts to this team, doesn't adapt, adapts to La Liga, doesn't adapt to La Liga, as long as they get Jude Bellingham back to Jude Bellingham and Vinicius Jr. back to Vinicius Jr., which he's been pretty good all season, you gotta worry about him too much, and Rodrigo doing Rodrigo type things, this team can win the Champions League and win La Liga without Mbappe. So at the end of the day, it's all about just getting Jude Bellingham back to Jude Bellingham. And today, that's exactly what Ancelotti does. They get awarded a penalty early, early on, and instantly uh, he puts it into the back of the net. And then I'm almost 100% sure Jude Bellingham puts the ball for the, the Mbappe goal, which is a phenomenal goal, which is Mbappe doing Mbappe type things. So at the end of the day for Ancelotti, I want to actually want to make sure before I say that, that it was Jude Bellingham who got the assist. But I'm, I'm I, unless I'm like absolutely insane I, I i i'm 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 pretty confident that that's exactly what happened it was the it was the homeboy um jude bellingham who slid a beautiful pass by the way um to mbappe and it is a jude bellingham assist and again it's jude bellingham doing jude bellingham type things and jude bellingham getting back to what he does right so at the end of the day for me i think that was the most important thing and i know i said it in my last video and 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 i go brother i i just said something right it's not like i'm like oh some freaking guy with a bunch of ball knowledge. i ain't got ball knowledge I just thought to myself, like common knowledge, right? Jude Bellingham was one of the best players in all of football last year. If you really sit down and think about it, as great of a season that the homeboy uh, Vinicius Jr. had, right? As great as a season he had, um, Jude Bellingham was the first one. Like he was the first one to be carrying Real Madrid early on. Like very, very early on, it was Jude Bellingham that was just doing his thing thing early on and taking Real Madrid to another level so when I really sit down and, and and think about this this football club I think about this football club in a way like yo if Jude Bellingham can cook the rest of it is just gonna fall into places so when I look at Mbappe central it's not the same as Mbappe on the wing the movement Mbappe makes for this goal that Jude Bellingham the ball he puts him in the beautiful finish it's a great like powered finesse shot off the post into the back it's a beautiful goal from Mbappe but the movement he makes as a left winger is what Mbappe does. Mbappe makes great movements on the left-hand side. And not only that, Mbappe is able to use his speed better on the left-hand side than he does in central positions. In central positions, you're constantly being, you know, uh, uh, constantly being pushed around and bullied by these two center backs. These two big guys usually, right, are just like, pounding away and just hitting you and all these kind of bumping you it's different and when you play out on the wing you usually have a, a, a right back on you um and 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 Mbappe 99.9% .9 of the time is gonna be fast in that right back sometimes right backs are smaller Mbappe could just have his way with most uh, fullbacks in the game right so when you really sit down and you think about it like you look at like um you look at like players that can clamp like an Mbappe or Vinicius Jr. is like walkers and stuff. There's not many that are going to clamp these players. So you get a better Mbappe outside. The problem is Vinicius Jr., who was up to win a Ballon d'Or, plays that position. So this is a very, very tough scenario that Florentino Perez has put Ancelotti in because at the end of the day, lads, when you really sit down and you look at this team, you just think to yourself, um, how could it be poor? How could it be bad? But it's 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 just the fact that you have two of your superstar players that both like the same position. And everybody could be on the bandwagon of laughing at this guy and making fun of this guy, but this guy is going to do Mbappe-type things. He is going to get back to being the world's best player. And when he does, I'm going to be there for it. 
Because I guarantee you this guy is going to win Ballon d'Ors. I guarantee you when this guy finds his confidence and finds himself again, he's going to win many, many things in football. And the amount of hate he's been getting and the amount of people laughing at him, it's just, it's just, it's, 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 it's just not fair. It's a young player adapting to a new league, adapting to a new team that is full of superstars, adapting to a team that just won the Champions League, just won La Liga, just won everything, and he's trying to find his space. They're trying to make up things about Jude Bellingham not liking him, that Jude Bellingham hates him and doesn't want to pass him the ball. They're trying to make up things about this player don't like him. They're trying to make up things about he's not happy in his personal life and he's doing this and he's doing that. Mbappe just needs to do Mbappe. Mbappe needs to shut down all this nonsense. The world's going to talk. People are going to criticize. People are going to make fun. But at the end of the day, we know the talent this guy has. We know how great he is. We know how good he was in World Cups. We know how good he is for France. This guy is going to be amazing for Real Madrid. It's just Ancel Ancelotti's job to figure out a formation that he can get the best out of Vin Vinicius Jr., and Mbappe all at the same time on the field. But the most important thing, how do we get Jude Bellingham to be the Jude Bellingham that we know, that we fell in love with, that we understand is amazing? That, for me, is the biggest thing. That, for me, is the number one thing. Once Jude gets going, the rest will fall into place. I promise you that because Jude Bellingham is in the position in the field that is kind of pulling the strings. He's kind of like manipulating where the ball goes, how the team plays, the, the pace of the game. He's that important because he's that player that's really taking it from the midfield to the front. So it really comes down to that guy playing well. And then on the other side of, the, of, of La Liga, you have Barcelona that's going through a slump that's just horrendous. And I've had a lot of people hitting me up like, hey, yo, Skills, why are you not making videos on Barcelona no more? How come you're not doing this for Barcelona no more? How come you're not talking about Barcelona no more? And, 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 and the truth is, I didn't I, I didn't watch Barcelona. I'm gonna keep it an absolute stack with you, bro. I think that game was an early game, so I didn't want to come on here talking about Barcelona like I watched them. I didn't watch them, so I couldn't come on here and be like, you know, I watched the highlights back. I look at the highlights. I saw what happened. I understand they're going through a slump. I think Barcelona's fine. I think they have a great manager. I think they have a great team, but also I think they have a young team, and I think they have a team that's not as stacked as Real Madrid, and I think they have a team that doesn't have as much depth as Real Madrid. And as the season gets longer and as games pile up and as you have an older striker in Lewandowski, things start to, you know, really, really play on your legs, bro. You know, it starts to become that. Like, hey, when we take out this player for this player and that player for that player, is the team as good as, you know, you look at Madrid and they start taking injuries, but that team has so many, so much, so many superstars that they kind of are able to deal with it a little bit better simply because because their financial situation is better. They're able to deal with it better simply because they have so much talent. Last year, you saw so many players go down by them, and they and they were able to just get through it because that team is not in financial issues. So they bought a lot of they have players. And then Barca, on the other hand, their their eleven is so strong, and, 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 and but their financial issues have made them lean on younger kids. And it's, it's tougher. So I definitely think Barcelona's going to be fine. I think the season's a long season, and I think things will be good. But I don't think there's no reason to push the panic button on Barcelona yet, bro. If the slump continues for a few more weeks, then we push the button. But right now, I think Barcelona will be fine, bro. Uh, they just need Lamina Mao and everybody start cooking. And I think it will happen, bro. I think Lamine, but Lamina Mao has been injured for them, right? Did he play yesterday? I don't know if he played yet. He, Lamina Mao has been out. But I don't know if he played yesterday. Let me check real quick. Like I told you, I didn't watch the game, man. I did not watch the game. I told you that. I didn't watch it. Um, so I don't want to act like I watched it. Um, Lamina Mao did not play. You see what I'm saying? Lamina Mao is a big thing, man. He's been out. Think about it. Their slump. He's been out. They've been going through a slump. Same thing with Man City. Ruben Diaz got hurt. They've been going through a slump. Injuries affect teams, man, massively. And I think that one's really, really affecting them. But hey, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, man. And Bappe, I will be there for your, for your, for your glory days. I will be there. I will be there. I've been there the whole time, and I will be there. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, man. Real Madrid fans, congratulations, bro. Y'all are in a great spot now, bro. Just like that, all of a sudden, La Liga. Oh man, we thought Barca was gonna run with La Liga, and now all of a sudden, Barcelona has 34 points, and Real Madrid has 33 points, but they're a game behind. Which means if Real Madrid win their game, all of a sudden they're in first place even though they won't, lost El Clasico. Something to think about. It's kind of crazy.